Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. I did a video a while back to try to address all of the questions around the game mechanics of Wonders, and you guys came up with 10 more that I'd never considered. So let's dive in and take a look at those. The first question is, what if you have a wonder counting down, and then make a second one, and then the first wonder is destroyed? Does the timer continue or reset? It turns out that every wonder you make actually starts a new countdown specific to that one, but it only shows you the one with the least time remaining. That means if the first one is destroyed, then wherever your second wonder's timer is at will become the new one shown in the corner. If you had seven wonders, for example, you'd have seven independent countdowns, and if any of those wonders stood long enough, you'd win. That means there is technically an advantage to making multiple wonders if you can, just in case the first one is destroyed. The next question is about the game mode Defend the Wonder. It's not played very often, maybe partly because nobody really knows what it is. Basically, the blue player starts with a wonder and can either have some allies or be alone in defending it against everyone else. The game starts with a countdown to the blue team victory with a different timer length based on the map size. The larger the map, naturally the longer the countdown, but to give the attackers a better chance, it's actually 50 years longer than countdowns in a standard game setting. It's a post-imperial start like a deathmatch game, with a wall, 7 extra villagers, and extra resources. The attackers start with the most and any of Blue's allies helping defend the wonder start with the least. There's also no way to build an additional wonder, meaning there's a set maximum time for each game where you can pretty quickly jump into the action and not have to worry about a game that drags out for too long. The third question is about King of the Hill and why sometimes you can have a unit closer to the monument but it doesn't convert. This is of course a monument question instead of a wonder question, but it's close enough. As you probably know, monuments work by converting to the first person who reaches the grey area around them. That person, in this case me as blue, can hold it even with just one unit in the grey zone. That being said, if I no longer have any units in that area, then who gets the wonder next? Red is the next highest player number, green is the closest, and yellow has the greatest number of units in the middle. So what happens? It turns out it follows the rules of curling, and green gets it for being the closest. As long as he then keeps at least one unit in the grey area, he'll keep control. So when it comes to switching to another player, distance is everything. But what if two units are exactly the same distance away? It turns out it goes to whoever has the highest player slot, regardless of what colour you pick. For example, if player 2 and 4 are the exact same distance away, it'll go to player 2. You can see that wherever I put player 2, they get the monument next. Now this is measured by slot number and not which colour you pick, so even a yellow player 2 still gets preference. That means there's at least one obscure situation where there's an actual in-game advantage to hosting or joining a lobby early. The next question is about repair cost. Wonders of course cost wood, gold and stone, and that's exactly what they cost to repair. Like any building, the cost to repair it from 1 HP back to full is half the cost to build it. Next, the question is whether there's a way to convert a wonder. The answer is no, wonders are one of the buildings that can't be converted. That list also includes a few other buildings like castles, walls, towers, town centers, and monasteries. Question number 6 is what if a player holding a monument resigns and then wins? Now that's a very interesting question. You might think it would revert back to being Gaia, but it turns out, no, you can still hold on to monuments even if you resign or are defeated. So when the timer reaches zero, there isn't a surviving player that can be named the winner, and basically everybody loses. That is, unless you all had fun, in which case everyone's a winner. The next question is about Treadmill Crane, and what if you get that partway through building a wonder? Now some texts, like farm upgrades, need to be finished before the building is made. But in testing it out, it looks like it's affecting the builder's work rate. Getting it halfway through a construction means they build faster once it's researched. So it finishes faster than if you'd never researched it, but slower than if you had it the whole time. The next question has to do with the AI and how it thinks about wonders. Now the AI definitely knows that wonders are special and has some unique behaviors programmed for them. For example, in Wonder Race it knows to get a market quickly, get to the Imperial Age as fast as possible, and that the goal is to build a wonder. It'll also do things like ignore relics since they don't pay off quickly enough. Likewise, in Defend the Wonder games, if it doesn't own a wonder, it'll prioritize making trebuchets, which seems like a reasonable thing to do. Most importantly though, with standard victory settings, if the AI has an enemy with a wonder, its behavior is encouraged to attack that particular player. 
though it doesn't seem the AI really knows which building in particular is the wonder. It definitely understands the existence of the countdown, and has a special command to suggest it to attack when there's around 13 in-game minutes left. Of course, in practice the AI has a lot of factors competing for its attention, telling it to do different things, but rest assured that thought and effort has been put in to give it some urgency and strategy when it comes to wonders. Moving on, question number 9 is about whether the Hun's atheism tech needs to be researched before the wonder goes up. Also, does it work on King of the Hill? The answer is that atheism applies at any time it's researched, adding a little over 8 minutes to the counter. Keep in mind it also applies to your wonders, so you might not want to get it if you're leading the countdown. It also does work on Defend the Wonder, extending the game beyond the normal time frame. That makes them a great choice if you're on the attacking team, but on the flip side it also applies even if you're on the defending team. On the other hand, the atheism tech has no effect in King of the Hill. Likewise, when playing Wonder Race, the game ends as soon as the wonder is finished, so it isn't relevant there either. The last question is if I've ever wondered what a wonder can wonder, if a wonder can wonder about wonders. I think the answer is the wonder would wonder as much about wonders as the wonder could wonder, if the wonder could wonder about wonders. But that's all for this one, thanks again for all of the wonderful questions, and I'll see you next time.